All right, so helper protocols. These are protocols that assist the network devices in getting your traffic from point A to point B. They don't actually carry your data. That's why I call them helper protocols. And actually, I just kind of ripped that from the NMAP website. But the, um, the concept or the idea is simple. They're, they're going to help set up the communications, or they're going to help the computers get to know one another. Um, in some way, they're going to connect hosts together. And so address resolution is one of the most commonly used, very important helper protocols. And it comes in a bunch of different forms. If you think about the local network segments, we had hosts that were trying to learn about one another and talk to each other on the local subnet. So they have MAC addresses and they need to know things like what's the IP address of my friend over there or you have an IP address, like let's say that you're a router or a switch, okay? So you get this packet back and it has in it the IP address of the computer that you want to get it to. But if you're a switch, you send things over MAC, right? So you need to know the MAC address of the network interface. The IP address is nice, but it doesn't really solve the problem of transmitting a packet over a local subnet. So you have these resolution protocols that can take an IP address and transform it into a MAC address, or you can take a MAC address and convert it into an IP address. And the address resolution and reverse address resolution protocols take care of this. But there's also the same kind of protocols that work at higher layers. So we have things like NetBIOS and Link Local Multicast Name Resolution, the LLMNR. Those identify hosts within a Windows uh, work group or domain. And what these protocols are somewhat proprietary because they, they are generally used by Microsoft. And these communicate computers' names, in other words, host names, between Windows machines. There's a more generic uh, form of this concept is domain name resolution, the common protocol used by all hosts all over the world to resolve do domain names into IP addresses. You want to connect to an FTP server on the internet, web server on the internet, other types of computers. In order to discover the IP address of this computer that's halfway around the world, when all you have is the name, you can use DNS to do that type of resolution. So these are all resolving protocols, but they're just resolving from different points of view. The address resolution protocol is a layer two helper. It's only used within a local subnet because MAC addresses have no meaning once you cross over into another network. But it's, it's critically important within a network. If you're actually doing ARP poisoning, this is the protocol that you're abusing. And again, that's why if you're going to do sniffing by doing things like ARP poisoning, you have to actually be on the same subnet as one of the two systems that are talking. The reverse address protocol just resolves the other direction, but they actually have the same packet structure. The way you're going to be able to tell the difference between them is there's a protocol type field, which gives it away, but also, if you think about what's going to be in the sender hardware address, that's the MAC. And the protocol address, that's typically IP, because usually layer two is, has a tendency to be carrying IP packets. But again, because layer two knows it can be carrying different kinds of layer three packets, it just calls it the protocol address. We'll just assume for purposes today that that's IP. Then you have the... Um, so you have the protocol address, and then you have the destination hardware address, and then you have the destination IP address. Well, let's say that the, the MAC addresses were filled out, and one of the IPs was filled out, but the other one was blank. Well, you can kind of tell in that case because of what the packet is asking for. It's asking to fill in that blank field. You can tell that it knows the MAC address, and it's asking for the IP address. And if the reverse were true, then you can kind of tell that the packet 
was trying to resolve the other the other way. So they're they're basically the same packet structure, the ARP and the reverse ARP, but the fields that you're asking for are going to be slightly different. And the idea behind the ARP is fill in what you know. So if the computer that's asking the question knows the MAC address, it's going to say, you know, who has this IP? And if it knows the IP address, it's going to say, who has this MAC? The NetBIOS protocol is kind of analogous in a way to a DNS packet as far as it, it asks questions. Uh, kind of like ARP where ARP is asking who's at you know, this or who's at that, but it's more asking what computer has this name. And it's the host name and it's the Windows host name most of the time. So this can create some confusion because it is possible for a computer to have a host name in the DNS records that doesn't match the host name in the NetBIOS records. And so you'll get some kind of weird stuff going on. Um, I see this a lot with internal websites where you have folks that are good at writing web pages and putting content out there and making really awesome design and you know beautiful pages, but they know absolutely jack about how the internet works. And so they don't know like why it's wrong to have a website at http colon slash slash fred or http colon slash slash ip address one two three four. Um, they don't see why that's a problem. So when we're talking about the NetBIOS name search protocol, remember we're talking about the Windows host names typically. We're not necessarily talking about the host name as you perceive it from the internet. It's domain. It's domain name. It is flat, yep, and it's typically generally associated with work groups, um, which are computers that are not necessarily in a domain, but that does not mean that computers in a domain don't use NetBIOS. It's just, that's kind of where it got its start, and that's typically the association. It's a very popular protocol. It's a great way to learn the names of computers because it is often enabled in Windows shops. So you're... Yep, it's, uh, it doesn't have to be, but it typically is. Yeah. Very, very, very important. It is, yeah. It's not easy to get rid of. Um, it's prolific. It's been superseded a lot by this link local multicast name resolution, LLMNR. And so uh, it's not uncommon at all to see the LLMNR and the NetBIOS running side by side. But the... Uh, LLMNR works conceptually in a, in a similar way. It's more flexible, has more um, features, but it's conceptually also a, a naming helper protocol. So when you're looking for this kind of traffic and packet captures and things, you want to be typically looking for UDP 137, and you should be able to see some of those packets if you filter for those. And then the last helper protocol that we'll talk about today, the one that's going to be very relevant for um, some of the network traffic that we'll look at, is DNS. And this one we're largely familiar with, just if nothing else, you use it all the time, so you have at least an ancillary familiarity with it. Um, you want to go to Google, and so you're going to type into the bar google.com, or if you're like me, you'll actually go to Google and search for Google because you just have such a terrible habit of searching for everything in Google. And uh, what you're really asking, ultimately, is you're trying to find out what IP address that computer's at because your operating system is going to want to communicate over a network to get to this destination. And if you remember back to the IP protocol, it used IP addresses, a source IP address and a destination IP address. It did not use the host names. It didn't use domain names. There wasn't fields for that in those IP packets, right? So before you can actually strike up an IP conversation, you need that IP address. The domain name doesn't do you any good. And that's why you're going to need the DNS protocol to translate the domain name that you're trying to get to into the IP address for your operating system so that it can actually build that IP packet 
based on that structure that we looked at. 